Sow these seeds 6 millimeters deep, 6 centimeters apart from each other, in rows about 30 centimeters apart. Try to distribute your seed evenly so that seeds don't grow together. Jeez, hold up a minute, will you? I'm working as fast as I can. Keep this soil moist with frequent shallow watering. Cover with a layer of sand to prevent a crust from forming. You expect me to lug sand all the way up here from the river? After watering, put your finger in the ground. It should be moist, but not wet, to your middle knuckle. How long until we can eat these carrots? They'll be ready to harvest in 60 to 80 days. God, that's forever. Deactivated structure hologram. How's the planning going, Arash? Slowly and exhaustingly. Well, here, have a ration pack. Mmm, pseudo cinnamon flavor, high calorie nutrient bar. My favorite. Unfortunately, they won't last forever. How long do our supplies project for now? We've been eating them twice as fast as they planned, because you weren't supposed to be here. So we've only got about two months left. Maybe three if we cut our calories to bare subsistence. Two or three months? That's right about when this carrot crop is supposed to be ready. The potatoes will take a little longer, unfortunately. How's the analysis of native plants going? A lot of them are toxic, but a few are passing all the tests so far, so there's hope. QuietPlease.org presents 253 Matilda. In the early 22nd century, the crewed asteroid 253 Matilda left the solar system on an interstellar mission. Generations later, after 114 years, a new star system stretches out in front of them. Episode 17, Eddington. Marcus, this world is changing. I think it's dying. What do you mean? Haven't you noticed how much colder it's gotten since we arrived? And this wind, there wasn't so much of it before. And most of the plants have been shriveling up or changing color. This sort of thing happens on Earth too. They call it seasons. But we're in the tropics. Eccentric orbit. Ariel says we're heading into Eddington's winter. What's happening? Eclipse. It'll pass in an hour. I'm gonna get these with a gas giant neighbor. No, I mean, what is this stuff that the rain is changing into? Is it dangerous? Snow. <laughs> and didn't you ever watch any holotainments that had snow in them? What does this mean for the crops we planted? Nothing good. Especially since we're only a few Earth days from sunset. It's going to get a lot colder during our weeks-long night. Let's get back to the ship. Ariel, how long is this winter projected to last? No precise definition of astronomical winter exists for this world. Please clarify. Estimate time until temperatures stay above freezing consistently again. Estimated time to last daytime freeze is three Earth months. Estimated time to last nighttime freeze is four to five Earth months. And if it ruins our crops, we'll have to start over with the planting. That'll take way too long. Ariel, can we generate enough power in a mobile pack to keep our crops from freezing all winter? Negative. Sufficient power is available for lighting to stimulate overnight growth but capacity for outdoor heating is negligible. Could we grow inside the ship? Insufficient space. But if we take out- It's too late to start over replanting anyway. What about building a greenhouse around what we've planted? Insufficient materials available. No native materials are sufficient to protect against projected temperatures. Seems there's only one answer. 
We need to start eating the native food. But without taking more time for additional toxicology studies, we can't be certain that's safe. There's a quicker way to find out. What's that? I'll start eating the real food. You can be the control group and stay on rations. Well, if you're sure. I'm so ready to taste something besides these boring rations that I almost don't care if it kills me. The ones on the left could kill you. The three on the right probably won't. And the one on the top shelf might be okay if you cook it. This'll be the best random alien plant salad I've ever tasted. Marcus, is that you? Who's there? Oh, hello there. Do you want in out of the cold? I've got some food we can share. It hasn't killed me yet. A flawless first contact. I'll have to give you a name. How about Drina? You look like a Drina. You have company. I thought I heard you talking to yourself. Nope, the food hasn't put me into a delirium. Marcus, meet Drina, our first friend on Eddington. Looks kind of like a cross between a lizard and a raccoon. I wonder why it's not afraid of us. I haven't seen any sign of large animals or any predators. There may only be herbivores on this world, so they've never evolved to fear being hunted. Not only is the universe stranger than we imagine, it is stranger than we can imagine. You feeling all right, Amani? I thought as a resident of Eddington, I should start reading some of Arthur Eddington's books. That's one of his little nuggets. Incoming transmission. They must have retaken control and repaired the dish. Well, we'll see. This is the planet Earth calling. Oh, damn. Quiet. Congratulations, you courageous land explorer. If you can hear me, you've become the first human being ever to set foot on a world beyond our solar system. Everything you do is on behalf of our entire planet, and we want you to know we're all behind you. It's 2208 here, and today's data stream from 253 Matilda was from 2207. We have to make a lot of guesses to figure when you land on Tau Ceti V2, and you'll probably have picked a new name for it. So, I apologize if our greeting comes a bit late. We'll retransmit periodically in case it's early. We know you're probably getting a little lonely out there all alone. So we'll also be transmitting news and entertainment from Earth for you once a week. We wish we could hear back from you directly. But I hope I live long enough to hear 253 Matilda relay your mission reports for however long you're in range of them. Again, congratulations from everyone on Earth. You're an inspiration to us all. Nice to be appreciated by somebody. I'm confused. What this time? Earth transmitted 12 years ago by our clocks from 12 light years away. But we had four years of time dilation, so our clocks should be running four years ahead of theirs. Doesn't that mean we should be hearing their transmissions from only eight years ago? Huh. No sense wasting your time trying to understand brain twisters that don't matter. Marcus, we live on a moon named after the guy who proved relativity, and we got here by relativistic travel. But understanding it still doesn't put food on the table. Just accept your limitations and move on. Think about where you're going to find more of those things you say have that chocolatey taste, or tomorrow's recon. Hmm, that's odd. Oh. Oh. Amadi, help. What's the problem, Marcus? I came to a spot with no snow. I was taking a look and suddenly the ground collapsed under me. Are you okay? Uh, I don't seem to be hurt. I can't get back to the surface. On my way. Amadi. 
What was that? I didn't say anything. Go. There's something down here with me. Animal? An object. Technological? I think so. Don't touch it! Might be like what we found in the mines. Too late. I just did. Made out of metal. I can go that much. Cold. I'll dig out the rest of it when you bring me enough light to see what I'm doing. Made it. Can you toss your light down? Catch quite a trail for you too. It's pretty small, whatever it is. Got it. It's only a couple kilos. Looks old. Definitely broken. Whatever it is. Can I have a look? You can, if you can pull me up out of here. It's no good. I can't reach you. You need a rope. I don't think Ariel has one of those. How are those vines behind you? They feel sturdy? Mm, might work. I'll tie this end around the base of one of these scrub like things. Catch. Is it long enough? Yeah, it's good. Take my hand. Whew. Back on Matilda, I could have just jumped up. If it happened on Miranda, you probably have broken every bone in your body. Well, here's the metal sphere. You know what it reminds me of? What's that? Sputnik. Hmm. Could be somebody's probe that crashed. Looks too primitive for the aliens who invaded Matilda. Maybe it came from Miranda. If there really are cities there. The gravity there is so strong. This is about the biggest probe they'd ever be likely to manage to launch. Too bad they didn't sign it and leave contact info so we could return it to the owner. Okay, let's get it back to camp for study. Is it Drina? You hear something? Is there somebody out there? Marcus? Amadi, you made it, you old snake. The hell? Don't pretend you've forgotten me. I haven't forgotten you. You're Jesus Maradona. And you're dead. For 22 years now. Of course I'm dead. How else could I be here? Huh? Haven't you figured it out yet? This is the planet of the dead. You're saying I'm dead? No, not you. Everyone else gets here by dying. You're the first to take the long way around. So there are other dead people here? On the island. The island? The island of the dead. Is... is Marissa there? Did she die? She's there. They're all there. It's ironic. While you and Marcus were racing towards Eddington, everyone you left behind beat you here when their escape attempt failed, and the aliens decided they were too much trouble and wiped them out. How, how can I get to the island? I'll guide you. Where is it? Do you know how to get to the northern coast? That's not too far. I can call up the map. Meet me there tomorrow, and I'll teach you how to build the raft you need. You still asleep, O'Rash? I think this will be our last day of daylight for a while. Don't waste it. Uh-huh. Where could you be? I don't suppose you could tell me what happened to him.
What do you think? Not bad for a beginner. It should get the job done. Should I go back and get Marcus now? Marcus isn't coming with us. But... He's not ready yet. He'll join us later. Now let's go. Let's get this thing into the water. Looks like a storm is coming in. Are you sure this is a good time to be on the ocean? It's the perfect time. Let's go. It's so cold. Even with this waterproof gear. We're in. Now start paddling with that oar until we're far enough out that the current can take us where we need to go. Uh, you said it was close. Shouldn't we be there by now? Where? The Island of the Dead. Do you really believe you've earned that? What? Do you believe you deserve to be reunited with your loved ones on some beautiful island? Sounds like heaven, doesn't it? I thought... I'd rather take you to the other place. The place your life earned you. I don't... A long time ago, you stabbed me in the back. I'm happy to finally return the favor, for myself and for Marissa, and for all the other people who hurt and got killed in their hour of greatest need. But I, I wasn't in control. I tried. I'd carve I tried on your tombstone for you, but it looks like yours would be an unmarked, watery grave. chewed you up and spit you back out. Marcus. It's over, Amadi. Just let the sand envelop you. A rash. What's the verdict, Doctor? Will I live? Hypothermia. Here, you get this around you and we'll try to raise your temperature gradually. How'd you find me? Adrena led me. By smell, maybe. Your footsteps weren't hard to find in the snow most of the way either, though. Across the sea? I can see you built a raft. Well, those winds must have pushed you right back to shore. And there really is no island of the dead. What? A island of the dead? This is where Adora told me everyone we've lost is waiting there. He told me to build the raft. Jesus Maradona is dead. Yes, but he's standing right next to you. Huh. I think that native food you've been eating must have some sort of cumulative neurotoxic effect. Better get you back on rations. What? He's telling you your mind isn't under your own control. Again. You're seeing things. You're nuts. How could I not notice the signs? How could I be fooled again? We have found a strange footprint on the shores of the unknown. We have devised profound theories, one after another, to account for its origins. At last, we have succeeded in reconstructing the creature that made the footprint. And lo, it is our own. That sounds familiar. Something the man this world is named after wrote 300 years ago. Did you discover anything about our little metal sphere while I was recovering? I opened it up. It's got electronics. They're not entirely incomprehensible in design. But I don't have the knowledge or equipment to say anything more detailed. 
I can tell you it's all been cooked so bad even Larissa wouldn't be able to make it work again. Must have been a parachute failure or a miscalculation. A rash? We have to make a big decision. We have to make it now. What's that? We have to decide if this world is viable, or if we should pull up stakes and head to Miranda. Can't we give it some time? Rations will run out soon. The long freeze is killing the crops we planted. I haven't been able to determine if any of the native plants or animals are free of the neurotoxin that sent you off the deep end. So if we wait, neither of us may be sane enough to make a decision later. Exactly. But if we go, there's no guarantee things will be better on Miranda. The weather will be a lot better. The gravity will be a lot worse. The rest, we don't know. Those possible cities on Miranda are tantalizing. And a chance to meet the people who crashed the probe here. I'm sick of roughing it. Wouldn't mind joining a technological civilization again. I'd hate to base our decision on that and then find no intelligent life. Or that the food there is poisonous and we have no time to plant. There's no coming back from Miranda. The gravity well is too deep. What do you think, Gina? She, uh, just pooped on your bag. Must be her way of telling us we should go. That's the last of the gear loaded. Close it up. I'm gonna miss this little moon. The bone-chilling mists. The damn snow everywhere. The hallucinations trying to get me killed. I hope where we're going won't make me miss it. Ariel, can you project how long it'll be before we land on Miranda? Assuming optimal rendezvous and docking procedures, estimated landing is in 34 hours. Okay then, let's get going. Goodbye, Eddington. You've been listening to 253 Matilda, Episode 17, Eddington. Created, written, produced, and directed by Paul Neerham. Marcus Flint is Glenn Haskell. Detective Arash Amadi is Paul Neerham. Jesus Maradona was Matt Ellis. The Earth Controller is Mary Ann Stanick. The computer is Microsoft Azure Neural Voice Jenny. The farming instructor is Microsoft Azure Neural Voice Monica. The announcer is Aaron Summonsby. Sound effects and music courtesy freesound.org, asoundeffect.com, freepd.com, and audionautics.com. This program is licensed for free reuse and redistribution. Hear more episodes at quietplease.org slash 253.